Hey, hi, good morning. This is Neil here and uh, I'm very delighted to talk to you live today uh, regarding how we convert voice of customer into business needs. I want to spend the next few minutes talking about various techniques and tools which are there in Six Sigma which can be used for essentially converting the voice of customers. In fact, we will go one step further and talk about how do we gather voice of customer, how do we determine who our customers are, then we would go to the next step of converting that verbatim into customer needs, essentially business needs, and then to technical needs. I'm going to use an approach of a case study for this. I have a live case study. I want to introduce the case study and walk you through the case study. And I'm sure in this process, you're going to learn. So first things first, I'm going to briefly talk about our organization and then I'm going to move on into the uh, actual case study and I assure you that it's not going to take anything more than 30 seconds so let's uh, move on talk about who we are as an organization as an organization as I mentioned uh, we offer Lean Six Sigma education and certification and uh, this is part of an organization called Canopus Business Management Group. We have around 25,000 students and we cover various corporates and universities where we have time for the course. So we do offer certification. So if you visit the link that's, um, that I've mentioned at the bottom, which is Six Sigma certification course.com slash CERT, you would be able to understand more about the certification criteria, how could you go about getting your certification, etc. So with that brief note about who we are, I'm going to jump talk about the actual case study right now. The case study that I want to introduce to you is a scenario of a large organization a conglomerate which has businesses across various sectors and they recently entered the real estate sector. So they wanted to sell retail units, retail housing units to customers and they ventured into this new business unit. They launched a few projects and they were pretty successful in achieving reasonably good business results. The challenge for the organization, however, is that they were not able to leverage some of the contacts, some of the network that they already have. They have a lot of goodwill in the market and they could not tap that goodwill. They were mainly relying upon the digital marketing leads and uh, the cost of each converted sale, the marketing cost of each converted sale worked out to be somewhere around $1,300 or so. So most of the referrals that they were getting were pretty much passive referrals, soft referrals, but they didn't have a, a good program around how they can generate referral leads from their clients. So that was their concern. From the historic data that they have, they realized that the conversion ratio of uh, referral leads are as good as 80% and the cost would be negligible, you would know that. So there is a huge opportunity. So that's the business case and the problem statement. So the goal was actually to establish a, a process for actively generating referral leads and using that as a source for lead generation and for sales. And at the end of this uh, initiative, they wanted to at least get around 25% of their sale from referral leads. So that was their objective. So what process or what approach do we use in this scenario? So this is a classical scenario of designing a process, right? And how would you use a classical Six Sigma approach? We need to first start with our customers, right? We can't just go ahead and design a process that we think is right. We need to look at uh, the customers, understand the customer needs, and then go ahead and create our process, right? So the first step is to identify who our stakeholders are, who our target stakeholders are. I'm not using the word customer here intentionally because I want to restrict this conversation, uh, not just to customers, but I want to also include other stakeholders as well. 
because in businesses we realize that customers play a significant role but for us to be successful we need to not just look at customers alone but we need to look at various other stakeholders as well and so that's why i'm calling that the stakeholder uh, uh, rather than calling that the customer now the next step for us would be to go and gain insights from them and then affinitize those needs using affinity diagram to understand what are the underlying issues and then finally uh, map those issues to business needs so these broadly would be the four different steps and we will talk about how we will go about using some of the tools uh, in the next few minutes uh, i'm sure as a six sigma black belt or as a green belt uh, you must have learned how to convert voice of customer into business needs and if you haven't been exposed this is part of any lean six sigma green belt curriculum so if you're looking for certification etc the concepts that we're talking today would be very very important for you from an exam perspective and of course from an implementation perspective so we offer a, a variety of lean uh, and Six Sigma related uh, resources, learning resources. So I just want to quickly brief on them. We do have uh, free resources, which are free courses. We have uh, uh, a variety of online courses, uh, starting from Green Belt, Black Belt. We have courses on Python uh, using a Six Sigma or using Python to do Six Sigma analysis both ways. Yeah, we have a book on um, how do you prepare so the book is in a question answer format that's called as the lean six sigma master black master book for green belt certification so that's also there we also have question papers what we call as practice tests for iassc asq for green belt and black belt so we have a variety of resources uh, if you want to learn similar concepts you should look at them okay coming back to the case study which is more important for us right now uh, in this scenario, we went about looking at who are our internal and external stakeholders. The focus first was on our external stakeholders. And as you would know, our external stakeholders would be our customers. Uh, essentially, this is a referral program. So we're looking at who could be our potential referral customer. So they could be group employees, employees who are working in the group, in the conglomerate, uh, partner ecosystem, uh, we're looking also at uh, the employees as uh, or the people that we know the referrals as not just customers another way of looking at them as uh, depending on the how much uh, influence they cause or they impact on the sale you could call them as buyers users so buyers are people who make the transaction happen users are essentially the people who live in the house for example the decision makers are those who cut the check and influencers are those who influence the decision of buying the house. So your kid could be an influencer, you could be cutting the check, users could be yourself and your family members. And in this case, buyer would be you if you're doing it directly or if you're going through a broker, then the broker would also be a buyer for you. So we could also look at this uh, uh, problem from an economical standpoint, that is to say uh, as uh, HNIs, uh, upper middle class or affordable class and so on. You could also split the same customer segment by geography. So you could call them as a tier one or tier two city dwellers. So you could look at this data in multiple ways uh, if you want to mix and match and make sure that you hit the right target segment. So that's for external. So we did this exercise of finding out how many of our customers fall into each of those buckets. I've not put the numbers here, but that's what we did. The next was to look at internal stakeholders. We have frontline employees who are actually involved, interacting with the customers. And then there are backend employees who often don't necessarily interact with the customers, but have a wide variety of experience handling the customer transactions. So they are also important uh, stakeholders to us. So once we have done this, the next step for us was to go ahead and select who our priority segments are. What you're seeing on the screen now uh, are essentially uh, a, a more structured way of segmenting the customers. So you could segment the customers by revenue, you could segment them by geography, by their size or by industry, by market segment, by loyalty. So there could be various ways in which you could segment the customers. I had shown you the way I did that and you could do it in other ways as well. So once we did this exercise, the next priority for us was essentially to go and uh, 
uh, prioritize the stakeholders because it's not humanly possible for us to touch or meet or connect with all these customer segments. So we did a priority ranking as a team uh, where we felt there was uh, more traction, where we felt there's potential and where we felt there is enough data available for us to go and reach out. So the ones here are uh, the ones where we thought the highest priority should be, twos would be the next and threes would be the last. So moving further, we would now go and interview those customers or we would try to gain insights from the customers by using other means, not necessarily interviews. Uh, but remember that these customer interviews are not like other interviews that you would do with your customer where you would throw open a set of questions asking how would you rate our service, how would you rate our product and so on. This is going to be a inside based interview which means you need to ask a lot of open-ended questions. Uh, you need to have fewer questions, don't have too many questions. Uh, again, I wouldn't emphasize much on the sample size in this case i know there are statistical sample size computations and we cover that in our green belt course as well but here the emphasis is going to be on qualitative data so we are going to focus more on the insights so remember that the feedback you get should be directly helpful for the objective of this project uh, you should also be able to articulate or extract articulate or unarticulated needs of the customers. Unarticulated needs essentially needs to come out. So you may want to go beyond looking at just the uh, literal verbal feedback and look at even non-verbal clues because we know non-verbal clues actually amount to around 80% of what uh, people try to communicate. So if you're doing a face-to-face -face discussion, yeah, you should go ahead and try doing that uh, as also a source of data and uh, make sure that you try to use this information to challenge your own beliefs about what products you offer and how your customers are using these products. So once uh, this exercise is done, that is the voice of customer is done, we would have ample data. But before we go ahead and do that, we need to do a little bit of planning. So based on what I talked about, you need to take your important customer segments, the priority customer segments, and uh, map them to see for which segment, what kind of method am I going to use to capture the feedback. Essentially, interviews, which I talked about, could be one big way of capturing insights. But yes, you could also look at focus group discussions. You could look at surveys as well. So the grid that you see on your right side is uh, the grid which uh, points towards which segment and what method of data collection would be used. And the numbers you see within each of those blocks essentially talk about how many samples of customers, so how many uh, data points are we essentially looking at. So surveys, you could touch more people, but for the focus group discussions, we're talking about three groups. So each group could have around seven to eight customers. So we're talking about around 18 to 20 customers and the interviews would be one to one. So we're talking about six plus three. So that's nine uh, customers or nine stakeholders that we would interview. Also remember that the interview questions for the uh, customers, in this case, the uh, group employees who are HNIs, that is high net worth individuals, and the sales team who are internal st uh, stakeholders have to be very different. So you need to do some homework preparing those questions. Uh, when we did this exercise, uh, here's what we got. We got a lot of insights. So we recorded most of the conversation that we did and uh, then uh, we try to extract the verbatims, the phrases which are more uh, important for us, more pertinent for us. And I'm showing you just a sample of those uh, verbatim that you uh, would see on your screen now. And uh, this verbatim was essentially uh, about what the customers felt about us. And so if you see, you would have a wide range of points. I'm going to take a, a, a brief pause for 30 seconds for you to read what's there on the screen so you could make some meaning out of it yourself. So there you go. Uh, I'm sure you would uh, by now realize that customers have a variety of reasons for why they are not referring. We are talking about potential uh, referral customers, employees of the organization, of the conglomerate, 
or our ecosystem partners or our current customers why are they not referring their friends they're not referring their colleagues they're not referring their relatives to come and buy our new project a new uh, real estate property so these were a snapshot of those reasons next thing was to affinitize that so an affinity diagram is a tool which is used for grouping broadly the customer needs we could also group anything else that you want we commonly use the affinity diagram in, in strategy workshops to group the various points that people come out with when we do a visioning exercise etc but in this case our focus was to group the customer requirements so we broadly put that into four broad buckets so these buckets were communication process process product and service offering the next was the incentives and you see logically we have put each of those uh, uh, issues or each of those verbatims into these various buckets these four buckets you could have as many buckets you want but uh, i personally would recommend that don't go beyond six to eight buckets it becomes overwhelming for you one key point that i want to highlight when you do this is that don't decide the title and then put the items below that that's what we would be tempted to do but try to do the reverse so try to group these items logically depending on what they're talking about so this could be things that you write on on a post-it on a sticky and try to reorganize them move them around on a piece of uh, paper a chart paper or on a wall and uh, try to group them and group do that as a group activity and you would realize that many of you or most of you would agree that certain things would fall under a specific theme and then you might also be convinced that this should be the topic for the theme like in this case we decided it should be communication process product and service offering and incentive so that is the way for you to go and group these items uh, remember that uh, the process is more important that is the process of doing the affinity diagram is more important than the outcome itself so once we have done that then the next step was to go ahead and uh, extract the issues so for these four buckets, uh, based on these verbatims, uh, ideally you should underline the key phrases in each of those verbatims and then extract and say, what is it that the customer is talking about? What are the pain points? Or uh, relating to the objective that we have on hand, the project, what is it that people are saying? So those were uh, then grouped into the same buckets. There could be some overlaps and that's why you see that the arrow marks for communication and product service offering do overlap a little bit but broadly the objective here is to make sure that we understand the underlying issues under various themes so that's the primary objective from here on i'm going to take only a snapshot of few things uh, and then go a little deeper and explain the process so till now we have completed capturing the voice of customer and we have identified the issues the next step would be the final step where we are trying to convert uh, the issues into functional requirements or business requirements. I'm, I'm sure if you're working in IT organizations or you're working in, in corporate or, 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 or in functions which require you to uh, generate or analyze and come up with uh, problem statements, business cases, etc., you must have heard of this uh, business requirement document right or business needs analysis so essentially this is what we're trying to do from the voice of the stakeholders we're trying to extract and say what are the business needs here we are articulating the business needs and you see right on your screen uh, that the business needs in this case uh, are all horizontally placed so in the dark blue and I have taken just a snapshot of few customer needs. Essentially, you need to take all of them. Uh, the issues, I have taken only a few set of uh, around four issues or so to simplify this and show you. And you see how I got those items that I've written on the top. Uh, referral announcements should reach uh, at least 60% of the customers. The first contact with the uh, customer who has been referred, the prospect with whom you're going to be uh, pursuing your sales should happen in the first four hours and so on. So you have all the other points which are mentioned here 
essentially what we're trying to say here is that these items uh, will have to either come through brainstorming or through benchmarking or that is competitive benchmarking we'll briefly talk about that or it has to come uh, from your vendors the vendors will have to extract and tell you uh, depending on the business needs that they've given as to how they will be able to fulfill those needs so essentially this is what a, a vendor if you're engaging a, a single vendor he would give that as a solution document or solution architecture if it involves some kind of technology but remember that this is very very important for you to own and it, you cannot outsource this to a vendor it's quite easy to outsource this to a vendor but remember that if you want the required outcome of this initiative or this product that you're trying to buy or a solution that you're trying to put in place in your organization you need to own this so the source for this could be benchmarking looking at what competitors are doing or competent competitors are doing it could be uh, going uh, inward analyzing the current process to find out what is flawed and then uh, unflawed or put a solution for that or put uh, a countermeasure for that and that countermeasure would become a functional need or a business need or it could come uh, from a, a technology breakthrough you know something is happening in ml something is happening in ai and uh, you could take that and convert that into needs as well so you could arrive at this in a variety of ways and there uh, is some science to that um, so you could not jump to this uh, step right away sometimes so what you have to do is to go step by step so from customer needs to business needs then from business needs you go into functional needs from functional needs you go into what we call as subsystem needs so you could drill that down uh, in multiple ways uh, but I'm just showing you uh, showing you a simpler version of how this could essentially happen. So take a look at it. Uh, essentially, the circle inside a circle, the blue circle inside a circle means there is a strong relationship. And the dots that you see, the green dots, the colors are not important, but the sign is very commonly used. Uh, the circle represents a medium impact where you have no symbol means there is low or no impact. And a circle inside a circle, as I mentioned earlier, is a strong impact. So if I vertically start analyzing this data, I might be able to say in which functional or business need do I have maximum circle inside a circle. So you have three of them having two circles inside a circle. It is single point of ownership for referral, dispersal within 48 hours and multiple options on referral incentive these three have circle inside a circle so these business needs uh, become extremely important for us to fulfill uh, you could also analyze this horizontally to see for which customer requirement uh, do you have a circle inside a circle for which you don't have a circle inside a circle uh, that means that for that customer need you have not been able to uh, derive a business need or a, a business functionality that's a weak area for us in the business so this analysis could be done in multiple ways uh, if you are overwhelmed and you have too many items in your list let's say i had only a handful of items there on the top but let's say you had 30 or 20 different business needs and it's not possible for you to fulfill all those business needs so the best way for you to do that would be to prioritize so you could use what's called as a moscow tool uh, there are various ways in which you do it uh, people talk about kano model uh, I'm, i have covered that in my course as well kano model uh, we also use the moscow uh, for a change i want to touch upon moscow so uh, moscow is an acronym uh, where all the o's here don't have much meaning but uh, M stands for must have, S for should have, C for could have, and W for wouldn't have. So it's not would have, but it, it's wouldn't have. What do these mean? Uh, must have essentially means that uh, it is a non-negotiable customer need and at any cost we need to fulfill that. So mandatory customer needs uh, should have essentially is something that is important, that's vital. Uh, uh, sorry that's important but not vital uh, they do add significant value to the customers but 
uh, we could still run the show so I can give you a simple example as an employee now I know many of you are going through the adversity of COVID etc so must have would be your salary right uh, without a salary you may not if you're employed uh, should have uh, would be that you get a good uh, promotion by the end of this year or you get a bonus by the end of the year so could have we'll talk about the third one could have so the could have are things which are nice to have needs but don't have uh, significant value but they are unique needs so I could say they are like the icing on the cake let's say by the end of this year your company decides that you are a super performer and they are sending you out for a vacation or no that's not a good thing to do so let's say they are sending you out um, for a, a grand uh, uh, a party where you meet the chairman of your company and receive a, a, an award or something like that right so something that makes you really proud of who you are so that would be a, a could have and I wouldn't have uh, I already said that so that should be a travel right so if your organization wants you to travel or go on a vacation because you were a good performer I'm sure this is not the right time to do so look at the customer needs so I'm going to just uh, scroll back into our original slide where we had the customer needs here and the needs are converted into business needs and these business needs would go into the Moscow so let's see how we do that uh, it's very interesting because this gives you a lot of insights about where you have to spend your time uh, all the items that you saw there I have grouped them into these four different buckets so I'm not going to read this for you uh, but I broadly want you to appreciate that must haves again are those things which are mandatory should haves add significant value but uh, they are not mandatory uh, could have are icing on the cake and wouldn't have are things good things but you wouldn't do them so here once you do this it's obvious that the must haves should be fulfilled at any cost so they are non-negotiable should haves would be good could haves would be competitive priority so when you do a Kano model when we talk about Six Sigma and in our course as well we talk about that a Kano model essentially classifies customer needs into uh, must be into one dimension and delighter so delighter could be could haves must be is must have and one dimensional are maybe the should haves that alone does not have a direct mapping but it relates closely to should have so this is way this is the way in which you prioritize the business needs so you know where uh, you would be able to concentrate in in IT in information technology they call this as a function point analysis so you want to build a particular functionality in your product how much would it cost you uh, because to create each of the items that we say here it's going to cost you so we should be in a position to know that uh, we are spending the money of the company in the right place so that's uh, broadly the example for you uh, benchmarking is also a very important tool but I'm not going to touch upon it remember that benchmarking can be done three ways benchmarking of the metrics which is hot which is what all of us do you could do benchmarking of the processes or benchmarking of the practices benchmarking practices is a great way of uh, identifying what you could replicate rather than merely looking at the metrics so uh, that's broadly the case study which explains to you of how we take the needs of the customer or identify who our customers are then their needs and convert that into uh, business needs the the step that I talked about right after you get that grid where you have on one side the customer requirements on the other side you have the functional or the business needs that can be iterated multiple times so what you could do is you could swap you could take the items which are there on the horizontal axis the business needs and put them right here and then add what could be the functional needs let me let me just show you an example of that and I think you will be able to appreciate that in this slide let's say that I'm going to take uh, this functionality which says first contact with the prospect within four hours now all these items that I've written right on the horizontal side I'm going to bring them to the vertical axis and now on the horizontal axis I'm going to write down the 
functional requirement. So what do I mean by functional? These are business needs. So functional requirements, what is it that I will do to fulfill that? So if I want to do first contact within four hours, uh, one of the things that I should have with me is a uh, resource. So I need to have an auto assignment of the uh, new inquiries to an individual. Probably I need to push this as an SMS or push this as, a, as an alert to him uh, through an email notification so that he instantly calls that customer. I may also need to have a tool which will give an escalation uh, if he does not call, he or she does not call the prospect within four hours. Uh, if the customer is not contact contactable in the first contact within four hours, uh, there should be a mechanism for us to capture that feedback and maybe push an SMS to the customer saying, uh, we try to reach you because there was an inquiry or one of your friends referred you and said you are interested and we want to talk about this, etc. Right. So these are all what we call as the functional requirements. So the business need is four hours contact, first contact, and these becomes the functional. Now I take these functional requirements and again put them on the uh, vertical axis and in the horizontal axis I go to my technology guy and tell him that how do I do this? And he's going to tell you that in order for you to fulfill each of those requirements, uh, you need this technology component, you need this plugin, uh, you need this integration, or you need this technology or hardware element. So that's how you would be able to cascade. This is called cascading of uh, business needs or customer needs from one step to another. And if you've heard of quality function deployment, right? QFD, quality function deployment, uh, the structure that I talked about right now, that's called as house of quality. And they do house of quality three times. So from customer needs to business needs, business needs to system needs, and system needs to subsystem needs. And if there's a need, they might do that once more. Uh, the house of quality looks exactly or nearly similar to what you see on your screen, the grid that I was uh, earlier sharing with you. So it looks exactly like this. Uh, except that it has uh, something like a hut on the top which talks about the interrelationship between various factors which are there in the horizontal axis. Ignore that, don't make it complicated, but this is broadly what a QFD is also going to do. So functionally, this is how things work like. So guys, uh, I'm done with this uh, 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 live streaming uh, to uh, all of you. Uh, I hope this is very helpful and I'm uh, going to be doing this more often from now on to connect with my students, to share my views. So if you really want me to talk about a particular topic or share something relating to a particular topic, it would be nice if you can drop that in the chat window or you know where you should reach me. So you can reach me at neil at collaborate, C-O-L-L-A-B-O-R-A-T.com. So collaborate.com. And uh, I do also welcome you to subscribe to this channel uh, because we would be sending out regular updates and, and we would be adding more and more content. So uh, I want you to get benefited from that uh, in future as well. So I would love to be connected with you uh, and interact with you and help you in your journey to become a better professional. So with that, guys, wish you all the best. Stay safe. Stay at home. Thank you.